Hey guys, what is up? Zero here, and welcome back to Fruits of the Literature Club, Chapter 5, Yuri Route. In the last episode, we finally got Yuri out of the school. Out of that uh, old abandoned school. Finally got out of there, all banged up and bruised and stuff. But we made it out regardless. Everyone's alive and okay. And yeah, now we are going to proceed. Ah. When I come to, a weird tingly feeling covers my body. The painkillers must be constantly fed into me, and I'm not used to it. It's almost nauseating. I place both of my hands on the guardrails and help prop myself up. Julie isn't in the room, and I was hoping to see Yuri, but oh well. A pretty looking nurse sits at a desk in the room and writes on a whiteboard behind it. I never noticed that desk before. It, I must have been out of it last night. Jesus. Oh, Zero, you're awake. Did you sleep well? I have almost no recollection of anything that happened, so I'm not really sure. Yeah, well, you weren't in that good of a condition when you came in. You became unstable and we had to give you immediate care. How does a boy like yourself ever even get so hurt? By protecting someone he cares about. Aw, that's sweet. It was that girl when you came in, right? The girl with you when you came in, right? Yeah, her name is Yuri. She's a sweet girl. One of the other nurses tells me she keeps asking for you. But unfortunately, the both of you needed your rest. I understand. Taking a, look taking a look around and peering out the window into the sunlight that blankets my eyes, I remind myself of the events that happened last night. Oh, so much, and how badly I was hurt really made it difficult to recall. How long am I going to be in here for? Around a week. She turns around to face me. A wound as bad as the one in your stomach is going to need a lot of attention and care. You, almost have, you also have to factor in that you went into hypervolemic shock. Jesus, did I lose that much blood? Oh yeah, you're almost dead white when you came in. We managed to stabilize you and get you comfortable for us to get that out of the way first. Now we're just going to need to check up on you over the course of the next week so we can make sure you're getting better. Damn, that's a long time. I hate hospitals. No one really likes them. <laughs> but they're here to save lives, and you were inches from losing yours. I'm grateful. Thank you, ma'am. Speaking of which, now that you're awake... She stands up from the desk, walks over to me, and begins wrapping the cuff of a sp spigometer around my arm. You might feel extremely dizzy for a minute. I just need to measure your blood pressure. Then I'm going to get you your breakfast. Oh my god, you're a saint. <laughs> oh, stop. So I was told by my guardian that Yuri's blood labs are still pending. Do you think you have any guess as to what she had? I'm afraid not. The entire situation with you two is foggy to me. I tend to not take much attention to stuff like that. It's just something you learn as a nurse after a while. Even if I did know, I can't really tell you. Information regarding her care is proprietary and confidential. I understand completely. The nurse presses a button on an overly complicated medical device, and the cuff around my arm fills with air and compresses. Almost immediately, I start feeling extremely dizzy. If you're dizzy, just lean back against the bed until it's over. I do as she says and wait for it to stop. When she's done, the cuff eases the pressure on my arm, and I can almost literally feel the blood rush back through. Whew, that was a lot more unpleasant than I would have liked. Sorry about that. It's fine. Let me go get your breakfast now. Just the mere mention of food makes my stomach grumble violently. I assume that I can eat solids and all, right? Yeah, your stomach wasn't pierced, thank God. You wouldn't have survived if it was. The gastric juices and, hy and hydrochloric acid would have leaked over your organs, and I don't think I would need to finish the rest of that description. Spare me. I don't think my stomach is strong enough to handle that. We both chuckle. I'll be right back. She promptly leaves the room. As she exits, Julie enters. Flirting with the medical staff, I see. Hey, you do what you must to get information. Sure. She walks over to me, arms crossed and wearing a smug face, and sits down. What's with the face? Guess what I got? A new brand of perfume you plan to asphyxiate me with? What? No! What lies? You have no better opportunity to take me out than now, woman. How can I believe you won't? I- Ugh. She 
Grunts and that smug smile turns to a stern scowl. <laughs> For real, though. Shut up! You play around at, like, the worst times. She rubs her forehead. Give me a break. I'm, like, a quarter dead. I give you a break and you decide to give me one. Julia, you'd never break me. Maybe if you were younger... Oh my god! N no! Julia's face flushes red and she looks away. I have your girlfriend's blood lab results. Julia makes quotes with her fingers. Anything interesting? Actually, yes. Julia pulls a small envelope out of a shirt pocket in her suit and places it on the bed. I promptly grab it and open it. Well, what she tested positive for seems to be an altered, uh, altered form of ketamine. Ketamine, is that meant to be an anesthetic? Traditionally, it's administered as one, but the traces of the blood lab found didn't match the common variants of ketamine. You did say she was having severe hallucinations, and she can't really recall much of those hallucinations to explain. So, I think it was altered with a hallucinogen. A hallucinogen. Which, if so, kind of makes sense as to why your captors gave it to her in the first place. What do you mean? Think about it, Zero. To either force her to tell them information, or to incapacitate her. Maybe both. You're on the right track. She also did end up getting aggressive and attacking things around her. Maybe it was foreseen and they wanted her to attack you, making your escape more difficult? That would mean they would need to rely on Yuri's emotional problems. I don't quite think that's something they just know about. Does she keep that stuff hidden? Like you have no idea. Hmm. I guess the only noticeable part of that is the cuts on her wrist. But she told me she was going to stop doing that. Julia stiffens her, stiffens her posture suddenly, but slightly. What the hell are you hiding from me? Julia lowers her voice. When Yuri was checked in, she had several wounds on her wrist that were badly infected. Son of a bitch. I lean back against the bed and calm myself. Those kinds of infections are never good. Is she okay? She'll be fine, but she told me not to tell you right away. Why the hell not? Again, think about it. She feels like she completely betrayed you. She explained to me how much trust you put in her, and she was proud of herself for being strong enough to resist those urges. She even mentioned her little idea about drawing or writing on her wrist instead of cutting. Which, by the way, very good idea. But to a girl like her, that trust means it meant everything. Her doing what she did made her feel like she wasted your confidence in her and that you'll just drop her. I see. You understand a little better now? Completely. Julia's little lecture right there hit deep and hit hard. Well, it makes me want to see Yuri more. I want to tell her it's okay. I want to tell her that she impressed me and made me trust her more than I ever have. I want to tell her that she was stronger than I was last night. Because she was. She was drugged, hurt, stressed, guilt-ridden, and fearing for her life constantly for days. And even after, and even after majorly wounding me. She still helped and tried her best for me. She held up through everything, and I didn't. I'll be damned if she thinks she betrayed me. Realizing I've spaced out pretty hard, I focus back on Julia. You're thinking pretty hard over there. Yeah, just reflecting, and that's all. What are the doctors going to do about the drug? Well, she was administered a very large and dangerous dose. She reacted pretty badly to it as well. But the staff has made her comfortable, and they've already given her countermeasures for it. She's going to be okay. Good. I'll lean back onto the bed again and heave a sigh. Good. <laughs> you certainly do care a lot for her, don't you? Yeah, more than I expected I would. That's sweet. Don't overanalyze. We're not dating or anything. Your tone of voice deceives you. We're not dating, Julia. Do you want to? I stay silent for a solid 10 seconds before responding. Mind your own damn business. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, yeah, have your laugh. I can't help it. When can I see her? I'm not actually sure. Why don't you flirt with the nurse a bit more to schmooze it out of her? Dear God, your word choice could have been a lot better. 
Also, you know damn well to get jealous when I do and get all pouty. <laughs> exactly. I hate you. Don't hate me for knowing you like a book. Keep your pages hidden, mess. Oh, I taught you well. Very. After a few more minutes of my self-reflection, the nurse walks in holding a plastic tray. Sorry to keep you waiting, but I got your food fresh. Thank you. When can I see Yuri? In just a little bit. She's being discharged right now. Hearing those words lift my spirit up a little, so I silently eat my breakfast and wait. After eating my breakfast, the nurse takes my tray after performing some more checkups, another blood pressure test, and an EKG test to make sure my heart's still performing correctly. Julia gets up and leaves the room without saying anything. She returns a few minutes later with a purple-haired sight that I've longed to see ever since I collapsed. Yuri! Zero! I'm so glad you're okay. She rushes over to my bedside. Ditto. How are you feeling? Definitely a lot better than I was last night. That's for sure. How's your stomach? It's been better. But what matters is that I'm alive, and those bastards didn't take us down. Right. I look over to Julia and nod to the side, gesturing her to leave. She acknowledges it, and walks out of the room. Yuri, I'm sorry for all of that. You of all people didn't deserve to get mixed up in that, and you could have died because of me. It's a burden I'm going to carry for the rest of my life. Zero. Even if I wasn't in the situation I was in, I still would have helped you. Huh? You mean a lot to me, and I think we have a lot more in common than we see. I know I'm weak and timid, but I will still try my best for you. Yuri, you're not weak and timid. Did you see how much ass you kicked out there? You held your own for consecutive days, and we still managed to get out because of that. Hell, you almost took me down. Very few people can actually say that. Yuri stays silent, her face flushing while trying to look away. But I... I hurt you. How can you still stand to be near me? Because I care about you. Yuri, I like you. Yuri practically freezes in place. You sh... you shouldn't. And why do you say that? Because I... Yuri slowly rolls up her sleeves and shows me her wrists. A bandage wrap covers them from the wrist up to the elbow. Although I knew about them prior, the mere sight of how severe it is still shocks me. She must have cut really deep and had nothing to clean them with. Yuri... I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Yuri starts to cry, still trying to avoid eye contact with me. Out of instinct, I scoot to the edge of the bed rail and wrap my arms around her. You don't need to apologize. Yes, I do. You trusted I won't do it again, and I promised you. I broke that, and I feel awful. The circumstances justify it. I guarantee that if what happened this last week hadn't occurred, you wouldn't have done this. Am I wrong? No. No, I'm not. You're a strong girl, and you proved it all. Don't think I stopped trusting you. If anything, I trust even more now than I did back then. She finally wraps her arms around me, but she tightens her embrace. I can feel her sniffling as she cries. This girl, I never thought I would ever find someone like her. She and I may have gone down different roads, but we hit the same potholes. And because of that... We've come to relate to each other in ways I didn't think anyone is—I don't think anyone is able to understand. And all I want is to protect the, this girl from any further harm. I want—I want to be with this girl. We both release each other, and I look up into her eyes. Yuri, I will protect you. I'll do whatever it takes to help you through your obstacles. Why would you do something like that, for someone like me? Because, thank God Julia isn't in here to see and hear this, because I want to be by your side through all of it. I have feelings for you, Yuri. Yuri wipes away her tears and looks at me nervously. Uh-huh. You don't really mean that, do you? I know we talked about this once before, but now I guess I'm ready. Yes, I really mean it. Yuri smiles and wraps her arms around me again. I close my eyes and hug her back. 
I actually did it. Never once did I think I would confess my feelings for Yuri. I've always been taught to suppress those feelings. And after all we've been through together, I can't ignore them anymore. This is an all too familiar feeling that is bittersweet. We both release each other and I lean back on the bed. Once I get back to school, everything can go back to normal. They're at your club, and everyone happy and peaceful. Something I've needed for a long time. Yes, I look forward to that. Actually... Julia steps back into the room, putting her phone back into her pocket. Zero, you won't be returning to school. What? Why not? Julia paces into the middle of the room and looks down at the floor. Admin has decided, since you were targeted for information, that you should be relocated. No. Julia, don't do this to me again. I'm sorry, Zero. It wasn't my choice. The pain in my heart hurts more than the pain in my stomach. Why? Why, after all this? Here he struggles to hold back tears and looks away. Julia continues to avoid eye contact. I'm truly sorry, Zero. I was just notified of this. I assume I have no choice then? No. You're wrong. Huh? I do have a choice. Zero, you understand what will happen if you don't comply, right? I'll be taken to custody for insubordinates. Correct, and I don't want that. And I don't want to leave. You're really going to do this, aren't you? Yuri buries her face in her hands and silently cries. Oh, what? Oh, this is the choice? <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, I mean, I don't know. Do I really just, I mean, hmm, really risking it all for a literature club. <laughs> oh, I guess I am also, I guess for Yuri too, I kind of forgot about that. I just kind of, just kind of forgot about Yuri and the equation it was just like, geez, really, really doing a lot just for literature, man. Ah. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, honestly, if we had to, oh man, what a, what a hard choice, man. I, I really can't tell which one's the bad ending. <laughs> uh, disobey orders. I mean, I, I honestly, if it pulls a fucking trick on me and this is actually the, <laughs> the bad ending, then holy shit, but, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I understand the consequences of my decision. But I do not wish to leave Yuri and the Literature Club behind. They mean too much for me to just abandon. Julia, I'm staying. God damn it, Zero. You said you would help me with my desire to live a normal life. By doing this, you're taking that one chance I have away. It won't be your only chance. Bullshit. Stop feeding me lies like I'm a child. I'm not a child anymore, Julia. All I want... All I want is to stay here with Yuri in the Literature Club. I'm sorry, Zero. Are you really? Because if you were, you would be on the phone getting me out of this decision. I can't. Don't you understand that? Yuri walks over to a chair across the room and sits down. Don't do this to me! Then what do you expect me to do, huh? Because what you're telling me is going to force me to take you into custody. I can't do that to you, Zero. Either get me out of this, or you might as well arrest me now. Julia seems thrown off by my command. I know deep down inside she can't bring herself to ruin my life. A life that she and Ashley made possible for me. She understands where I'm coming from, where I'm coming from and how I feel. And granted, I understand her point of view and how she feels too. But I will not be made a fool and forced away from those that I care about. I'm being hard on her. But I have no other choice. You're making this much harder for me than I can really handle. Then please. I lower my tone and calm myself a bit. Get me out of this. I know you can, Jules. You're almost as good of a smooth talker as I am. Do you know how many times I've talked you into doing something you didn't want to? Damn it. I know you can help me, Julia. I trust you. Do you really? Because... I don't know how to repay your trust. Julia herself starts crying. This isn't something I can just tell them, no, sorry. Let's think about this. Admin said it was because I was an information target, right? 
Correct, and you're an asset too valuable to be corrupted. I'm not going to be corrupted. You know me very well, and I would never do that. I do, and I know very well that you won't. But Hedman doesn't think so. You tell them it wasn't an attempt to extort information out of me. Tell them it was a personal attack on both Yuri and me. An attempt of trafficking, rans ransom, something like that. Hmm, you might be on to something there. But a report was already written up and... I put my hand up to stop her. I know you haven't submitted that report. The order to relocate me was, was preliminary to the actual report, right? Correct. But even if I do change it, they're most likely going to still go through with that order. You can at least try. Please, Julia, that's all I'm asking. Zero. She stares at me for a second, trying to get me to back down. But unfortunately for her, I don't plan on it. Fine. You're only going to make this worse for yourself in the long run. I'll accept what happens to me. Julia walks out of the room. Leaving only Yuri and me. She looks as distraught as I am. After breathing a heavy sigh, she stands up and walks over to me. I... You're going to get arrested if you don't go? Something along those lines? Yeah. Then maybe you should go. I always make things worse for people. And now I face bringing you that burden again. Thought we were talking to Yuri, not Sayori. <laughs> Yuri's eyes are red, and I can tell she's trying very hard to hold back her tears. Yuri, leaving you would do me more damage than staying. But I can't let you throw everything away from me. Zero, I care about you too much to let that happen. Yuri, in life you have to make sacrifices. And they're never easy decisions to make. And I made mine. I'm gonna die for a Natsuki's cupcakes again. <laughs> Are you sure that it's a smart decision, though? It definitely was not. But I came here so I can live a life of, no of normalcy. To finally relax and learn to develop myself as someone else than a tool for others to use. Now that I'm finally attaining that, people wish to rip it from me. I will not let that happen. But it sounds like it was for your safety. Yuri softens her voice and peers off to the side. It looks that way on paper. My safety isn't something my profession is concerned for. I'm only worried about the potential of leaked information. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Yuri still retains her hesitation and sniffles a few times. I take her hand to mine and look into her amethyst eyes. I... I trust you. She smiles weakly. You're discharged from the hospital, right? Yeah. You should get home and get some rest. Will you be okay here alone? Yeah, I promise. Okay. Yuri leans forward and gives me one last timid hug before leaving the room. The emptiness, the emptiness of the room and the weight of my decision almost makes me feel like I'm being crushed by some invisible force. Even through the painkillers I have coursing through me, the drop in my stomach makes everything hurt. I know the decision I made is going to have its consequences, but I stand by it. Leaning back onto the bed, I close my eyes and let my stress and exhaustion pull me into unconsciousness. I feel my shoulder being gently shaken. When I open my eyes, I see Julia standing over me. Jesus Christ, woman. Don't just stand over someone like that. You're going to give them a heart attack. I'm sorry. She sits down on the chair next to me and rests her hands on her lap. What do you want? Are you absolutely sure you want to go through with this? My answer has not changed. <sighs> You're endangering your future and possibly hers by doing this. You're giving her hope that you can stay here and be with her, and that if you're rippled and they're whipped and if and if you're ripped away from her, then you're just going to put her through more distraught than she's feeling now. I know girls, and I know this will hurt more than it'll hurt you. Hurt her more than it'll hurt you. Are you here to take me into custody? No. I finished the report, but again, I'm not really sure it's going to change anything. I appreciate you doing that, but I need you to have my back. And right now, I know you don't. How can you say something like that? Because I know you're hesitating quite a lot here. 
You have clearance for a lot of things, and you have a lot of permissions. I do, but that doesn't mean I can just overturn direct orders from above. If they see that you are targeted solely for information, they're going to take measures to restrict that from happening again. Julia, what happened was not an internal matter. It was domestic. And you and I went to the police after escaping. As far as they're concerned, it was a kidnapping that we got away from. We never told the police it was an attack solely on me for information about an organization we can't say anything about. Julia looks at me intrigued. The only people who know about that are Yuri, you, and I. I've already told Admin what you told me. I told Admin what an inc incapacitated loopy, teenage, loopy teenager really high on painkillers told you. What merit would that truly have? Coming from you? Quite a lot. Admin doesn't know that. <sighs> Julia, it's simple if you go by this approach. I raise the pitch of my voice and try and imitate hers. After further review, it is the team that 4219's initial statement cannot be admissible to the state he was in, as well as the influence he was under by medical staff and administered narcotics. Reviewing the domestic police de department's report, I can conclude this was a singular event with no possible chance of a trend. What about the individuals arrested by officers? I personally executed the man in charge. The rest, I assume, were only there on payroll. The reason for capturing me probably wasn't their concern. Probably. Assume. I need more than guesses, Zero. Do you remember what Ashley said? Huh? Instinct trumps in intuition. I was there during all of this. Took down many of these bastards, and I conversed with them as well. With the added threat of the police breathing down their necks, they aren't going to do anything further. That makes sense, I guess. I reviewed the police report, and several arrests were made. Yuri was able to explain where you guys were kept, as well as 911 calls from the people themselves calling for an ambulance. I don't know what you did, but it worked. As it always does. I work off of the training that you and Ashley gave to me. And even if I can't fully trust the decisions I make, like the one I made earlier today, I still go with it. I look at her and I reach out for her hand. She hesitates, but places her hand in mine. It was because of you and her that I'm able to make these decisions. <sighs> Look, I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Julia. That means a lot to me. But don't give me thanks yet. Nothing's happened yet. And don't get your hopes up. So, was the only reason you came here tonight to try and convince me to go? No, actually. Contrary to your belief, I'm still extremely worried about you and your injuries. I thought that maybe spending the nights here with you would help. So you can stop me from running? No, I know you wouldn't run away. What's the matter? Do you have a problem with a pretty woman spending the night with you? You're not in bed with me, so that doesn't count. What makes you think that that won't change? Fair point. It is you we're talking about. Hey, what does that mean? You know what I mean. I chuckle to myself. It does feel comforting being able to joke around with Julia. In fact, it was something I really needed after all this. I know that this is just as hard. I know this is just as hard on her as it is for me. If she isn't willingly asking me to leave this life that I found for myself, she's being forced to. After all, orders are orders. My thoughts are interrupted by Julia kicking her feet back up onto the bed. Excuse me. Do you mind? Yes, I do. I want to get comfortable too. I'm not sure you expect to sit in that position all night. It's actually pretty nice. If you say so. After another ten or so minutes of back and forth banter, we both decide to go to sleep. I lie back onto the bed and rest my eyes. She rests her head against the backrest. After a considerably short amount of time, I can hear her breathing shift to calm and relaxed. I still envy those who can fall asleep very quickly. As I try to rest, one of the image of Yuri and how sad she was earlier remains in my head. Sleep time. Mm. <sighs> Hospital food is something that you don't expect to be good. But to be fair, I don't particularly have a preferred taste palette. However, the food over the course of this past week hasn't been bad. I kind of like it. The only downside is that it reminds me of the food I had back in my old school. Train everything else, too. 
Well, I continue eating as Yuri, Sayori, and Mon uh, Say Yuri, Sayori, Monica, and Natsuki walk into the room. It's been almost a week since I was admitted to the hospital, and this is the first time I've seen the other girl since the incident. Zero! Sayori yelps and stops in her place, almost as if she doesn't know what to do. Natsuki's completely silent. Oh my. Zero, are you okay? I feel fine. I certainly hope you've been resting. As much as I physically can. I'm really glad you're okay. Yuri did say you were hurt and needed time to recover in the hospital. How badly were you hurt? Uh, pretty badly. Yuri looks away, making it painfully obvious that she's too scared to say anything. The guilt she still feels about stabbing me really eats at her. She and I had a conversation about it a few days ago. Nothing really much to explain. I was just hurt. I'll be fine. It'll just take me a bit to recover. Yuri said perks and she looks at me surprised. Almost as if I saved her from explaining something very emotionally difficult to her friends. I give her a you don't need to worry glance and she evidently calms down. Well, no matter what, we were worried about you and we're super glad you're okay. The club's been a little quiet since our two most renowned readers were absent. We had to resort to Sayori reading a book out loud. He. That sounds troublesome. Hey! What? You like to read really cheesy stuff. Just because I've read Milo and Otis seven times doesn't mean that's all I read! We all chuckle. So? Oh god, voice crack. <laughs> so, what can we expect you back? Um... Uh... Both Sayori and Natsuki look at me for an answer. I... Um... This is going to be hard to explain. Monica's arm falls to her side as she nervously looks between me and Yuri. There is a chance I won't be coming back. Huh? Why not? What? I think we need a little more explanation on that. I lean forward and ponder how I can bring myself to tell these girls what might happen. All the girls stare back at me, their eyes begging for this to be some kind of joke. I'm sorry. You don't need to apologize, it makes a lot of sense. Monica acts as if she planned to say something else, but stops herself. Sayori doesn't look like she can bear to speak. Only tears form in her eyes. You have no choice? No. Natsuki, I can tell, is much better at hiding her feelings about this than the other girls. But I can still see in her eyes that she's completely crushed. As it stands right now, I'm waiting on Julia to talk to them. What is going to come out of it? I still don't know. When I told the girls a slightly altered version of what Yuri overheard. I left out key terms and points that my job uses, but kept the overall points the same. The last thing I want is to expose them to something that only make things harder for them. Sayori, not saying a single word, walks over to me and wraps her arms around me. Normally, I would chastise her and pull her off of me for not giving me a warning, but for obvious reasons I don't. Sayori buries her head in my shoulder and I can feel her sniffle. I wrap my left arm around her. Yuri walks over and hugs me from the right. I follow up by wrapping my right arm around her. Natsuki and Monica look at each other before joining the hug. The hug from all four girls makes it extremely difficult to keep my composure. If what Julia said to me was true, that all of the effort we're trying to put in get to get me out of these orders won't work, that's going to crush each of these girls. And they don't deserve that. <laughs> Monica, I guess I was right when I said I can't promise I'll come back to the club. But you're a strong girl. I know you'll be able to watch over Yuri and the others when I'm gone. I keep those words in my mind as a way of calming myself down. I'm never really concerned or bothered by situations like this, but after everything that's happened, I am attached to these girls. Never thought I would say that. But all I can really do now is wait. After ending our hug, the girls pull out poems from their backpacks, and we have an ex parte literature club meeting in the hospital room. They also explained that they wanted to come here directly after school so they could have the opportunity of reuni re reunifying the club. But I can't enjoy the time I spent with them as the lingering uneasiness constantly taints my experience. Eventually, we finish up our time with the literature club and the girls begin to leave hesitantly. Yuri stays behind and sits down next to me. She and I talk for a while and I continually try to reassure her that everything will be fine. But she isn't dumb. She's right through my lies. Out of nowhere, however, Yuri says something that stops me, my, stops me in my tracks. You know, Zero, the sacrifices you're making just to stay here with us, with me, 
I really just want to thank you for them. You've taught me a lot about myself, and you've helped me in more ways than I can imagine. I understand that there is a chance you could get in a lot of trouble for staying. I really appreciate it. And if you ever do need to leave... She accentuates leave. I'll be more than willing to follow. I see. I understand that if I go on the run, I could endanger you too, right? Yes. I've thought a lot of that last week. Well, we'll see what happens. But if it comes down to it, I will not put you through unnecessary danger or stress. She doesn't respond. Julia walks in the room and looks me directly in my eyes. Yuri, can I speak to Zero alone for a few minutes, please? Yeah, sure. Yuri looks at me hesitantly and walks out of the room, doing a triple take before even reaching the door. Alright, go ahead and just say it. Julia crosses her arms and looks off to the side. I can't discern if what she's intending to tell me is good or not. So, in response, I prepare myself mentally for the worst while hoping for the best. Alright, so... Navin wants to speak to you directly. Wait, what? You heard me. Navin wants to speak to you directly about this. This time is truly out of my hands and is now in yours. I've done all I can. I appreciate it, Julia. When do we go? Tomorrow morning immediately following your discharge. I'll pick you up and we'll go together. Understood. Thank you. Don't mention it. You asked me to try my best, and I did. They at first were hesitant, but I happened to use some brownie points to score your recon reconsideration interview. The way you were then almost makes it seem like I preemptively are being punished. You aren't. If anything, you can trust me on that. You know what you're going to tell them? I pretty much have a general basis in mind. Good. I'm going to be heading out now. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Julia. She doesn't respond as she departs. Julia was oddly cold and professional there, which gives me a slight concern. I hope she's okay. Granted, I have been putting her in a position that she isn't really used to, but I know she's capable of handling it. I'm not an easy agent to supervise, which is why she was e even given her position in the first place. She's been through a lot, and I know for a fact she can handle anything I dish at her. While alone in the room, I quickly contemplate my approach of this for tomorrow. Shrey comes back in shortly after. And we're gonna end it here. That's a cliffhanger. <laughs> Are we gonna be able to talk to admin? Hmm. We're gonna be able to convince them? Who knows? We'll have to see. <laughs> I am confused about one thing, though. <laughs> Well, it was like when the, all the girls were sad about him leaving the club, and I'm just kind of like... I mean, he wasn't the nicest guy to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sayori being upset, I guess, kind of makes sense, because Sayori would be upset if anyone was leaving the club. But, like, Natsuki, N Natsuki would probably be like, why should I care? <laughs> I barely talk to him. <laughs> also, I was like, he didn't really, like, hang out with all of them, I don't really think. I don't really recall him hanging out with all of them. I think it was like, there was like one time in chapter one, maybe, where you did hang out with everyone, but I think it was just really, well, but I think it was like one time. <laughs> Monica might miss you, but I feel like, again, it'd be a more polite, oh, well, I guess we're losing another member. <laughs> it's like, the only people I can see legitimately being sad is Yuri and Sayori. <laughs> it was like, because honestly, it's like, because it seems like the MC is always going to have some sort of conversation with Sayori because you always have that lunch with her and stuff and all the shit in the beginning. But it's like, with the other girls, he doesn't really have that much of a relationship with them if you pick some of the other routes. <laughs> if you don't pick their route. <laughs> but anyway, that was just my little thing. I was always thought, I was just kind of sitting there like, I don't really think he was that good of a member for us to be sitting here being that sad. <laughs> or at least that good to them to be sitting here thinking sad. But anyway... Uh, so far, it's pretty alright. Uh, probably save my, my thoughts for Yuri Route again at the end of Yuri Route. Uh, and yeah, I mean, hopefully the next episode we finish Yuri's Route, and if we do that, then that's when I'll do the bad endings. Depending how long those are, we'll probably, we'll probably be able to fit the regular ending of Yuri's Route, and then maybe, like, bad ending Sayori in that episode, because I don't know if we'll be able to fit three endings in one episode, who knows? It depends how long the bad endings are. We'll see. But anyway, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed. 
If you want to download this mod for yourself, the link is in the description down below. And yeah, this has been Zero. Peace. <laughs> Don't take off my mask, revealing God.